care spending set to hit a new record. According to the Obama administration, national health spending will average more than $10,000 a person this year. And in the next 10 years, health care will account for 20% of the U.S. economy. It is currently at 16 to 17%. We want to bring in Stewart Healthcare Chairman and CEO, Dr. Ralph De La Torre. Good to see you, Dr. Ralph De La Torre. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. What has been the impact of Obamacare from your standpoint? Well, I think that the, the fundamental flaw in Obamacare was that it expanded access without fundamentally changing the way we deliver health care. And if you take a broken system that just consumes dollars and you add access and you expand it, it obviously costs are, are going to spiral out of control, which is exactly what's happened. I think what we actually need in the country is to reform health care, not just expand access. I feel like we reformed insurance. Well, We're paying for it, not, not anything to do with health care, though. Yeah, I mean, we made it accessible to a lot of people in different ways. And, you know, let's take that moral decision, moral discussion out of it. Um, you know, w when you do that, you have to look at the impact of the economy and what it's going to do to, you know, the taxpayers and to small businesses. And we never did that. We never fundamentally understood that in order to be able to do that in a fiscally responsible way, we had to change the system really from a revenue-driven, horizontally-based system to a cost-based system. In other words, you know, it, when you look at a patient's bill or what a, what a typical patient uses in a year, it's the hospitals, it's the doctors, it's maybe surge centers, maybe home care. Those are all horizontals. They're not intertwined. And each one of those separate horizontals are revenue-driven. They're trying to maximize the revenue that they get in without focusing on efficiency. If you did it the other way around, and you said a patient needs to consume or a population this much health care, how much of these things we need, and we did it from a cost of goods sold perspective, you, it leads you to a very different paradigm. Um, yeah. The Trump, the Trump uh, policy uh, paper that's being written is focused on three things related to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, uh, reform tort reform, mm -hmm. uh, increase the supply of doctors through an incentive program like a GI Bill, and then the third piece of it is to create more insurance competition and allow these insurance companies to go into each other's states. What are your reaction to those three things? So, so I mean, tort reform, I don't truly understand. I've seen both sides of the, uh, of the argument, right? So, so theoretically, you would assume that if you limited the ability of lawsuits to make it to the, the system, then yes, the people would do less defensive care. The problem is that tort reform almost always ends in capping the limits or setting a total limit. And while that has an actuarial impact on what you pay in, in premiums, it doesn't actually change the way you practice medicine. Doctors, whether it's a $100,000 judgment or a $500,000 judgment, it's still devastating to your ego. So in order to really change and for tort reform to have effect on utilization, it's got to have more of a, of, of a fundamental impact on how easy it is to bring frivolous lawsuits. You know, what about forward. the insurance competition? What's your reaction to that? So I, I think it, it, for insurances to compete effectively, providers, the healthcare providers, need to be part of the solution. So there needs to be a way, a change in the way that insurances pay for providers who provide health care. It can no longer pay for doctors separate from hospitals, separate from home care. They need to be combined, the whole ACO model, which, which has become popular. I, yeah. I want to yeah. just quickly raise one issue. Hillary Clinton and now President Obama backing a public option for Obamacare, which many see as the road to Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Medicare, we find out, is going to go broke two years earlier than we expected, and um, I think it's about 12 years from now. Uh, at the end of the decade, paying out more money than it earns. Is that disaster financially for the country? It is a disaster, but you know, the, the problem is that Medicare is a disaster. Okay? Right, it's so the they want to make Medicare for everybody, right, which is insanity. It, yeah, the way that it's structured. So there is no requirement in Medicare that you pick a primary care doctor. Okay? That's not only bad fiscal policy, that's bad medicine. I mean, you should have a primary care doctor, but they're so concerned about infringing and being viewed as limiting people's rights that they don't even set basic good medicine decisions. So, so doctor, you, you have led a, you're private, mm -hmm. you've led a very successful roll-up since uh, the inception of, of Stuart, and, uh, but your model, we were talking earlier, if you were using a revenue-based model versus your cost-based performance model, what would, what would be the percent impact, negative impact on your, on your EBITDA performance? 
You know, it, it, it'd be substantial. It'd be substantial negatively, but it would be even more substantial for the cost that it would mean to our patients. And I'll give you a perfect example that'll set it aside. So let's say there's a type of, of cancer treatment that's profitable, that the way it is set up is very profitable. If you're a hospital, you say, well, you know what, we're going to build this. Even if it's 50% utilized, we'll still make a little profit. And then if we can get more, it's all on the upside. If you're a cost-based system, you sit there and say, okay, I have this number of patients and I need this number of cancer centers, so I'll build exactly ones that are set at a 90% efficiency or 95% efficiency. One leads to costs in the system that shouldn't be there. And when you do that across every horizontal and add it up, it's a real problem. And that's why a lot of the insurers are, are pulling out. They're pulling out of Obamacare. Yeah, well, the, the, the fundamental problem with Obamacare is that, that they really expected the people who don't consume any health care to come in, pay health care costs, and cross-subsidize, and that's never happened. There has been massive innovation in every other industry, telecommunications, automotive, technology. Why haven't we been able to reform through technology and better delivery of systems uh, lower, lower price per cost of health care. Well, to be, to be fair, there, are, there is a whole host of innovation going on in health care. I mean, you look at what's happening with sensors and, you but know. it's still people... $350 to get my strep throat checked when I could go to a computer or have a doctor so in India look at it. So you think there's much more room? There's I a bigger do. runway I for do. I think, I think that there is an AMA cartel that also needs to be broken up the way we broke up the Bell system mm. in 1984. Your response to that? I don't think it's an AMA cartel. I think it's a voting cartel. I think that when you start changing people's health care, they get afraid. They know what they know, they know what's in front of them, and they get fearful. Mm -hmm. And the Medicare population votes in block and votes to defend its Medicare. And I think people, both sides of the aisle, play to that. But you do yeah. agree there's a way to deliver this stuff at a much lower cost. Absolutely. Change the entire S-curve if we think outside the box. Absolutely. We get Nardelli running HEW as an example. <laughs> Terrifying, but I'll go with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dr. Delatore, good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Ralph Delatore.